Good morning, and welcome to Food for Thought. Glad you could join me. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Well, we've come to the final week of Advent before Christmas. Uh, Over the past month on Food for Thought, we've emphasized and discussed hope, peace, and joy that comes to us from knowing God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this week leading up to Christmas Eve, our devotional broadcast will be emphasizing the love of God for humanity by giving the gift of Jesus. So today I'll be lighting the fourth candle ahead of Christmas, representing the light of God's love, which brings light into the darkness of this world. In Psalm chapter 86, 15, David wrote of the character of God when he said, But you, Lord, are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. The writer of 1 John speaks to us, emphasizing how God saw the world broken by rebellion against him, and that he had compassion and grace on us as a human race, despite our treatment of his kindness towards us with contempt. The ancient Israelites had been delivered from slavery by God out of Egypt, if you remember the Bible story. He led them through the desert to the promised land, and even though they were in a desert place with no water and no food to eat, God provided for them supernaturally. He gave them water supernaturally from different places. And he opened the storehouse of heaven and rained down manna upon them every day so they would have all of their food needs met. And he sent quail to them as well. When we look at this, we see um, the children of Israel when they were sojourning through the desert, having been given all these gifts from God, um, they were not thankful to the Lord for the gifts. As a matter of fact, they cursed and grumbled and complained against him, telling God that they detested his provisions. And uh, we see this in the book of Numbers 21, verses 6 to 9. The story is told of how because of the people being unthankful and ungrateful and rebels with a heart of enmity against God, God sent a curse of venomous snakes amongst them. And many of the people were bitten and were dying from the bites of these snakes. Now Moses prayed to God on behalf of the people and asked God to intervene. So Moses was instructed by God to construct a bronze snake and have this bronze snake lifted up on a pole. And if anyone was bitten by the snake, uh, that were the snakes that were in the camp, then they could look at this snake on the pole, this bronze snake on the pole, and be healed from the effects of the serpent's bites. Now, when Jesus Christ came into the world, he taught people a parallel between this story in Numbers and his own mission. Many know the people many people know the famous Bible verse John 3:16 but um, have not really considered the context of it. I'd like to read you this passage of scripture starting with John chapter 3 verse 13. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. This is Jesus talking. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that anyone who believes in Him may have eternal life in Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. So what we see Jesus saying here in the book of John 
gives clear insight into his mission on being born into the world. And this is why we celebrate his incarnation at Christmas. Now, just as Moses had constructed this snake in the desert, this bronze snake, at the people and the people suffering from the poison of the serpent's bites would look at this snake and be healed. So everyone who places their trust in Jesus Christ, although they're suffering from the the effects of sin and left to their own measure, uh, the effects would cause death in every person. Those who look upon Jesus Christ lift it up. That's talking about Jesus being crucified. So the sacrificial offering of Christ, those who look to him as their sacrifice, will be cured from the effects of sin. And this was done because of the great love of God for people. God does not will that anyone should perish, but that all people come to repentance and come to salvation in him. And the writer in 1 John gives further explanation as to God's motivation in sending Jesus, when he writes in 1 John 4, 9 and 10, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So, our hope in Jesus is not frivolous or foolish. We can look to Jesus and know that he brings us the truth and he brings us salvation. Sin's poison is very real and there is very real death penalty associated to sin. But because of God's love sent into the world in his son Jesus, there is a remedy for this. And Romans 5, 5 to 8 assures us of this saying, And our hope, does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us. You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we are sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Jesus, for your gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son into this world to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, that you are lifted up from the earth, just like that bronze snake in the desert that was lifted up by Moses, that whoever puts their trust in you will be freed from the poison and the death that follows through sin. Amen. I'm so glad that you've been able to join me for a few thoughts this morning. Have a wonderful day.